yo, we're gonna do some math. And guess what? You gonna learn today. You gonna learn today. We're gonna go over comparing and ordering real numbers. So we've seen this in the past. Um, it's definitely gonna be something that is real life applicable. And so we're just gonna make sure we review it and make sure that we're solid and we're good on it. We're going to compare and order real numbers. So remember the easiest way for us to compare and order real numbers is if we turn them into decimals. If our number's already a decimal, great. If our number's a fraction, turn into a decimal. If we got a percent, turn into a decimal. If we got a square root, because that's new this year, turn into a decimal. And then we line them up by place value and we compare them, okay? Like it says here, we need to compare numbers by lining up the decimals. That's very important. I'm gonna highlight that. We need to line up our decimals so we can compare them. When we line up our decimals, we're getting our place values together, okay? The bigger the number is, the further out it goes. The bigger number is, the further out it goes. The smaller number is, the, the less far out it goes. Maybe it's just a decimal number. We don't have anything out here. It's really important that we're lining things up to compare them. So why do we do it? Why do we compare and order real numbers? Because maybe, maybe we want to take our numbers and we want to put them in, I'm trying to think of a new color to go for. We just use right again. Maybe we need to put them in order from smallest to biggest. What's that called again when our order is from smallest to biggest? Ascending. Ascending order, we're going from small to big. I like to write a symbol that looks like this. It kind of looks like the less than sign to remind me I'm trying to go from small to big. From small to big. So what we might want to put in here is that our numbers are increasing. Our numbers are increasing in ascending order. The opposite of that, we'll use blue because that just seems like the opposite of red right now. The opposite of ascending, when we're trying to go from big to small, that's called descending. That's descending order, putting our numbers from big to small. So now I want the greater than sign. I'm thinking I want those big numbers, and I'm going to go to the small numbers. Your numbers are decreasing. So you might see all these different words. You might see ascending, big to, or smallest to biggest, increasing, or descending, big to small, decreasing. All those words are fair game, you could see them. A quick reminder, we talked about this last year. If you have any number to the zero power, for example, if I have the number five to the zero power, or if I have the number 12 to the zero power, any number to the zero power, the exponent of zero is equal to one. Any number, 5,360,207,015 to the zero power, it's still one. Any number with the exponent of zero turns to one. They're gonna try to trick you on that. Again, you get your calculator this year, which is super nice just to double check our work. But again, it's important that we know what we're typing in the calculator before we just become little robots, okay? So we've got a few examples that we're gonna try and then I'm gonna have you guys try some on your own. So this first one, I wanna put these numbers in descending order. Before I can even start to answer this question, I gotta think, what does descending mean? Descending means we're going from big to small. My numbers are decreasing. Big to small, or my numbers are gonna go down. Like we said, we need to turn all these numbers into decimals first. We need to turn all these numbers into decimals first and then compare them. So 1.5% is 
If you had me last year, you remember this is Beyonce's favorite thing to do in math because to turn a percent into a decimal, we move that decimal point to the left to the left and then we plug in our zero. So 1.5% in decimal form is 0 0.015. 0 0.015. For my people who want to use the calculator, if I want to turn that percent into a decimal, I can do that with Desmos. I can type 1.5% and then, oh, 1.5% of, and then I have to give it something else. I need to tell it what it's out of. 1.5% of our one whole, and it tells me over on the side that that's going to be 0 0.015. I'm going to write that zero over here just to help me remember there's nothing to the left of the decimal. One fifth as a fraction. Remember that fraction bar means divide. So to turn this into a decimal, I just take one divided by five. If I use my calculator, one divided by five, and I get 0 0.2. 1.5, a no work there. I write it over here again, line up your decimals, line up your decimals. And then this last one here, 1 15th, again, I can type it into my calculator or I can divide with my paper pencil, whatever makes you happy. One divided by 15 is 0 0.06 repeating. 0 0.06 repeating. Okay, we've turned all of our numbers. We've turned all of our numbers into decimals. We're not done, now we need to compare them. So, to compare, we need to look at our place values. Again, like I said, the bigger, the more numbers we have to the left of the decimal, the bigger the number is. When we're in descending order, we want to put the big numbers and then go to the small numbers. Our numbers should go down. So I'm going to start by looking at the numbers to the left of the decimal to see what's the biggest. So if I look in this place value here, that's my ones place value. I've got a zero, a zero, a one, and a zero. I'm trying to put my biggest numbers first, so that means my 1.5, that's gonna be my biggest number. So I'm gonna write 1.5 for my first number. Then I gotta keep moving down my decimal places. Again, big numbers first. So 1.5 has been eliminated. Now I want to look at my tens, tenths place value. I have a zero, a two, and a zero. Because I already used 1.5, I can't use it again. Zero, two, zero. My next biggest number is going to be 0 0.2. Time to go to my next place value. I've got a one and I've got a six. What's bigger, a one or a six? The six is bigger. So now I've got 0 0.06 repeating. So that means my last number, let's do that means my last number is that 0 0.015. Done, right? We're not done yet. We need to turn these decimals back into the numbers that they started with. Because if I ask you, put these numbers in order, and you give me different numbers than I gave you, you're going to make my life too difficult. Ain't nobody got time for that you need to turn these numbers back into what they were originally. So the 1.5, like we saw up there, that didn't change. 
That one's good. We're going to keep that one as 1.5. My next number was 0 0.2. That 0 0.2 was that number. So that means my next biggest number would be 1 fifth. My next biggest number was my last one, that 0 0.06 repeating. That was my 1 15th. And my first number, that 0 0.015, was 1.5%. Now I'm done. It's very important that you take those numbers and you turn them into that form that they were the first time when they were given to you. This next type of problem says circle all the numbers that fit in the inequality. So I need to compare with these two numbers. What's the first thing that we're supposed to do to compare numbers? We need to turn them all into decimals. So before I can even decide if numbers are going to fit in here, I need to turn that two-thirds into a decimal. What is two-thirds as a decimal? You might know this off the top of your head. You might need a calculator. Two-thirds of the decimal is 0.6 repeating. That means 0 0.6666666666 forever, okay? I'm going to have you guys pause the video. I want you to try turning these six numbers into decimals all on your own. You can divide with paper and pencil. You can use a calculator. Use Beyonce's to the left to the left. Pause the video. Take a minute or two. Convert all those numbers into decimals for me. I'll see y'all in a second. Okay, so these ones um, weren't too bad. Remember, if you want to turn it into a decimal, where my decimals go? Hang on. Remember, if you want to turn a percent into a decimal, you type your percent. So we have 77.5%. And then like we said, it needs to be of one whole. So in decimal form, that's 0 0.775. The next two were already done for us, already in decimal form. That makes our life easier. Three-fifths, again, in your Desmos, you just take three divided by five, you get 0 0.06. The percent, remember the Beyonce way, move it to the left to the left. If there's no decimal in your percent, it's at the end, it's invisible. We just move it two times to get 0 0.62, and then three-fourths is 0 0.75 as a percent. Now that we've got them all converted, now we need to go through and decide if this is going to fit on a number line for us. So I'm going to think about this number line. I have on this side my 0.6 repeating. Over here, I've got my 0.77. I need it to be between those numbers. It can't equal it. We don't have the equal lines underneath. It needs to be in between there. So if I have my number line, let's think about this first number, 0 0.775. Over here, we have 0 0.77. If we add that 5 on the end, is it going to be smaller than that number or bigger than that 0 0.77? It's going to be bigger. It's going to be just outside right here. So that one does not work. That one is not in our range. This next one, 0 0.32. My smallest one that I can have is 0 0.6666666. Is 0 0.32 between 0.6s and 0.77? Mm-mm. That's going to be way over here. That one does not fit. Zero point six eight one. 
0 0.681. Here's 0 0.6 repeating. Here's 0 0.7. Is that one going to fit between here? Yeah. Yeah, that one's going to be pretty close to this one over here. That's where we would see that 0 0.681. So that one does fit. We need to circle it. It wants us to circle our numbers that fit. Our next number, 3 fifths, that's 0 0.6. Is 0 0.6 going to be between 0 0.6 repeating and 0 0.77? Let's line up those decimals to help us out a little bit. If I have 0 0.6 and 0 0.66666 forever, I need it to be bigger than that 0 0.6 repeating. Is 0 0.6 bigger than 0 0.6 repeating? It's not. It's really close, but it's not. So we cannot pick 3 fifths. 62%, 0 0.62. Oh, hang on, let me throw that one on here. So we're here to be that 0 0.6. Not big enough yet. 0 0.62, is that going to fit? It's like here, if I throw that 0 on and I compare that place value, a 2 is not bigger than a 6. It's not going to work for us. It's just barely, again, just barely too small. And then this next one, 3 fourths. Is 3 fourths going to fit on that range? Yeah, it is. It's going to be about right here. 0 0.75, 3 fourths works too. So out of all six of those numbers, only those two worked for us. Okay. Our next one says select all rational numbers less than three. Less than three. I'm gonna have you guys try this one on your own. But all sorts of numbers. I need you to turn them into decimals and see if it's less than three. Or have you guys try this one on your own? Pause it. Pause the video. Do that whole problem. Do that whole problem. And then check back with me. Okay, let's see how you've done so far. Did you get 3.753, 1.41, 1, and 0 0.3333? If you didn't get those numbers, double check. But if you're good, Let's go through and see which ones actually work for us. So again, like it says, we're looking for all numbers that are less than 3. Less than 3. Is 3.75 less than 3? Is that smaller than 3? Mm -mm. That one doesn't work for us. 9 thirds, that simplifies to 3. But we got to think. Is 3 less than 3? It's not, it's not. If we had this sign underneath, if it was less than or equal to three, then we could circle it, but we don't have that equal line underneath. So three is not less than three. It's gotta be less than three. That one doesn't work. The square root of two, that 1.41 blah, that one is less than three. The square root of 2 works. Like we said, any number to the 0 power simplifies to 1. 9 to the 0 power, 1. That's less than 3. And then our last one here, got to convert those percents to decimals. That turns into 0 0.3333, which is less than 3. That one works too. All right. Sorry, Ms. Orson needs to stretch a little bit. I've been sitting a long time. I'm going to have you guys try these last two ones on your own. Do the first problem. We'll come and talk about it. It's in scientific notation. Ooh, we should probably go over that one together. We haven't done that one yet. Yep, we're going to do that one together. I lied. <laughs> so scientific notation. Again, we can do this on the calculator. It makes our lives easier. Turning things into decimals. So I've got 4.32. 
times 10 to the negative second power. I need to click this A with that cute little B. I can click this. And that gives me my exponent where I will type negative two. And it turns it into a decimal for me. So 4.32 times 10 to the negative two is gonna give me 0 0.0432. Last year when we did this, remember, we just jumped our little decimal point, the number for our exponent. This year we have calculators to make our lives a little easier. Our next one, 1 1.20 times 10 to the third. Let me clear my calculator. I'm going to type 1.20 times 10. Again, the exponent, that's the A to the B button on the top left. And I need that to the third power. I said it's equal to 1,200. 1,200. Try doing that last one on your own. Pause the video, put that one into scientific notation using Desmos all on your own. 4.32. Times 10. Exponent button's at a to the b. 10 to the negative 4. Don't forget that negative. Uh-oh. You didn't give me my number in decimal form. Uh-oh. Oop. My calculator went away. Type in the chat. Does that happen on your guys' calculators when you try to put it in scientific notation? I wonder if the exponent is just too big. Like, too many digits and doesn't have to make that big of a decimal. That's all right. Remember to make an exponent or to turn this into a standard form instead of scientific notation. We just move our decimal point because it's negative. We move it to the left. So I go one, two, three, four. So I should have point zero, 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 four, three, two. Point zero, 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 four, three, two. Now we read our directions. It says to put it in ascending order. What does ascending mean again? Small to big, my number should be going up. So looking at these numbers, if I line up my decimals, which one of these numbers is the smallest number? This one, but remember when we write out our answers, we want to make sure that we put it in the way they gave it to us. So my first number should be 4.32 times 10 to the negative fourth. There's that one. What's my next biggest number? This one. 4.32 times 10 to the negative 2, making my biggest number. 1.20 times 10 to the third. Voila. Now I'm going to have you guys try this last one on your own. Now I'm going to have you guys try this last one on your own. You've got scientific notation, you've got square roots, and you've got a decimal. I need them in descending order. Pause the video and try this one out for me. The orange one obviously needs to be done in an orange um, pen. So we should get three, uh, 32.4 for my orange eraser. My yellow eraser, the square root of 9 is 3. Simplify. And then blue, we've already got 3.42. Descending order means I should my number should be what? Decreasing. They should be going down. Descending, decreasing, down. They all start with that letter D to help you remember. So I'm trying to go from big to small. What's my biggest number here? That 32.4, my orange. But remember in the final answer, we want to see it written the way they gave it to you. So after my orange, what's bigger? 3 or 3.42? What's bigger out of those two numbers? My blue, my 
making my smallest number, remember, right the way they give it to you, the square root of 9. The square root of 9. Okay. Hopefully this was a good refresher for you. It's the same as last year. We're just starting to throw in those square roots that you didn't have in these types of problems last year. If you have any questions for us, please let us know. Otherwise, good luck with what you're doing today.